Welcome back to the LCS Lounge. We got myself, Jat, Raz, Emily, and Inspired joining us for this Game 2 champion selection. Inspired as our esteemed guest. What do you think the breaking point was in that first game? I think there was not enough playmaking from mid-jungle uh, from 100 Thieves. I think they are their strongest players. So honestly, if you are going against a team such as uh, C9 that has really good individual players everywhere, I think you have to take a bit more aggressive approach. So I would like to see something with the agents in the early game for Quid and River on more like damage heavy jungler. Yeah, I was going to say because it seems like outside of Talia, back when, it, before the break, when they were trying out AP, AD, uh, with jungle mid. River was really good on Zyra, defaulted to Talia, both things that you have like more early playmaking with. Mm. Um, but I think you don't wouldn't want to take him off on something necessarily like the brand where you're going to be more farming. So what do you think 100 Thieves strategy should be in draft going into this game? I think look for LeBlanc. Just ban AD mids like Corky and Tristana because I think Jojo is really good at both. And then try to play some mage matchup like either Huey into mm. into Jojo's mages because they are not the greatest or just pick LeBlanc and see what the Jojo will be uh, having prepared into that. And I'm pretty sure River can just play like Lee Sin. He can mm -hmm. also look into... I mean, honestly, I think Lee Sin would be the best because uh, it's the best pairing with LeBlanc and I think it's a strong aggressive duo and I really think they have to be the one making the lead for 100 tips if they plan on winning the game. And Tristana ban, I like it. Yeah, the Trist ban's coming in from 100 Thieves, so that's already a positive there. And I just want, like, going into the game too, 100 Thieves did have some positive plays, just as a reminder, the solo kill that happened top side for uh, um, Sniper was a huge win from that side, and then on top of that, the bot side of the map. I think they were, when they were looking for angles, when they were already in a deficit, that was a positive, so more tools basically will make it a lot easier. So, yeah, Ezreal comes immediately afterwards. I'm interested to see what their first pick priority, because that has been my question coming into the new patch, to see if people have moved away from either going towards Tristana, if there's a Rumble pick, I know that Nidalee has been a first pick um, in LCK for a few teams, and also you and um, Cloud9 have been prioritizing a much higher from other teams. What's your thought on Nidalee as a pick overall? I think it's good if you are controlling the game. If your laners are stronger and have push, and then on the Drake you are just outrending your opponents, I think it's it's good to play Nidalee, but uh, the champion doesn't really offer anything else than poke and just healing ability. Yeah. So in the straight up fight, she's just uh, a bit weaker than, than other junglers. Jace now been banned in both games. There was a Lucian ban by Cloud9 mm -hmm. in the first game. I am curious to see if that gets thrown in here because that could also be a quid, somewhat powerful mid jungle pick. So it's left open with the Sejuani pan. Inspired, how highly, with LeBlanc being up, how highly would you actually prioritize this LeBlanc? Uh, honestly, the Yon ban kind of says that they don't want to pick the LeBlanc because I think mm. Yon is one of the better matchups for LeBlanc. Like, it's really easy to push the Yon in and, and impact them up, but they decided to ban it. So I'm Got not it. sure what exactly is their plan right now because they are leaving the Renekton open and everyone knows Thanatos really loves his Renekton. I guess they were <laughs> happy with the with the Cassante pick, but uh, we'll see if they will be, be happy with it again. Yeah, we're next to Nidalee one more time for Cloud9. You know, ever since the Nidalee nerfs, it's undefeated in the LCS. You and True. Clever, right back on one. track. <laughs> <laughs> she just needed some nerfs. <laughs> the Ash is an interesting one. I mean, like, before the break, this champion was, like, hardly even seeing play because it was constantly being banned. And I guess the fear a lot of the time was if you had a Callista Ash or a Varus Ash or you have Ash Braum, it, like, the, the flexibility between bot lane has always been its strongest. So at least it can now lend Meech and Ayla some angles and fighting back against Berserk and Vulcan this game. Yep. And we see them locking in the Corky. So we'll see what presumably AP jungler that River is going to want to pick alongside that. Sedge is already off the table. That would have been something I would have. Another one that, mm. that combos really well and can get in lanes early. Yeah, um, I think the Cork is more of a pick away from C9 because uh, Tristan and Yon are already banned out and they have the Nidalee, so they are looking mm -hmm. for some AD option in mid lane. So I think that's why they kind of steal the Corky. I see the Zeri being picked here. Personally, I think it's a flex. We've could seen mid. some, it yeah. Yeah, it could be the Zeri mid. mid. Some mid laners, I've even seen just watching solo queue from Quadden as, as an example. Like there's a lot of it, like mid laners that have just been basically playing every other AD uh, yep. carry champion mid. So it's an interesting pick. I hope that we get to see it for the first time here. And especially in Jojo Pion's hand, I think it's going to be fun. Yeah, Brown Ban, I think they're looking for Leona on fourth. And uh, I expect 100 Thieves to just ban it out. Hmm. That would make sense. Six, okay. Six, yeah. So they're expecting the Zeri to be flexed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. God, what do you think you need from Cloud9's comp going on 4-5? Uh, because 
Braum is a pick that I thought that they would benefit from if they're going double AD. Um, but I think they're just aiming for Leona. Mm. They, they just want to keep, pick mm. the Leona here and keep Zeri flexed until the last pick. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Have a good blind pick. Oh, they oh there we go. That is, Leona themselves. That is interesting. Hmm. That is that's, interesting. Does Vulcan just prefer to play I Nautilus? I think he just likes Alistair. Yeah. Alistair? Alistair? I think Nautilus. Honestly, I think yeah. he, he, yeah. he is more of a Nautilus player. And Leona is a good answer into Nautilus. So I think that's why he banned it. Yeah, and if, I'm, if you're playing Alistair, you'd want to play into Leona a little bit. It's easier to take that fight. Yeah, and I mean, Alistair is not as good against Ash in the early game because True. she has the slow and auto attacks and she will always be able to kite you. Mm -hmm. MF ban. Ooh, MF ban. They really think that Zeri is going mid into court yeah. right now. I really expect now to lose here. Like, <laughs> what else would Vulcan cook? Lucian. Or they will play the Lucian mid. Okay. Double flex Zeri Lucian. And then to save the R. Yeah, save R five for support. I think he's just. He, I think he's just hovering this. Actually, I mean, Lucian Nami is not bad against Ash, so maybe it's gonna be Lucian into Nami last pick. Mm. They really wanna play Zeri Zeri mid. And we've seen a few. And just people. go like straight hard two v two. Yeah. Yeah. And we've seen some uh, Lucian into Corky uh, globally. Mm -hmm. That being said, the one that I. <laughs> Baker didn't have a good time versus this matchup, but he's just been struggling overall in general. But like Lucian, I think has been a pretty good answer versus uh, the Corky. So still very flexible, very open. It's going to be difficult for 100 Thieves to wrap up this uh, draft. Yeah, it depends on, we'll see here. If, okay, so they're picking the Nautilus away. It's also good lockdown for Zeri as well. Yeah, yeah but do you, do you want to play Lucian Nami against uh, Nautilus? I don't think so. So yeah. I feel like it will be just Lucian mid and you pick Zeri with uh, whatever support you like. Oh, I like that a lot. And he probably just goes Alistair again if that's the case. Yep. Yeah, I think if that's the case, he would probably just go for the Alistair. And well, the brand jungle coming in. At least in. River's on something that can do a lot of damage this game. Yeah. That's one That's one condition met from what you were saying, but they don't necessarily have a super strong mid jungle with Corky Brand. The question know? that I would send your way is like, you're in Italy in this case, and they're going to be going towards the Alistair, because a lot of the times with Zeri, you'd maybe go Enchanters, but I would hate an Enchanter with an Italy in general. Yeah, I think Enchanter here mm -hmm. is not it. Yeah, so this is their draft. Which one do you prefer between 100 Thieves and C9? Uh, honestly, I feel like C9 will win, but I kind of prefer 100 Thieves ba uh, draft. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I like 100 Thieves drafts better. Uh, the question for me is going to be, again, we talked about how strong Brand is, but also how River really wants to get into his lanes early. And I think that's when 100 Thieves excel. That is happening. Um, so we'll see if he can get it done on Brand. Take it away, Flowers and Azale. Thank you very much, Analyst Lounge. All right, River on the brand, Blabber back on the Nidalee. It's another episode of Renekton versus Cassante up here in the top lane. For those of y'all that might just now be joining us, game number one was pretty Cloud9 favored from start to finish. We had Inspired on as a guest, talking a little bit about how it seemed like 100 Thieves just wasn't able to respond. They weren't able to work together and be able to control what Cloud9 was doing, and C9 sort of just ran over them because of it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think C9 coordinated really, really well, and I think if you're a Cloud9 fan, you're very happy about the way in which they won that game. Because when you think back to spring, their early game was still very, very strong. But they often really faltered in these mid-game and late-game situations and team fights. That, I think, was kind of the big weakness for this Cloud9 team in spring. But, you know, this situation was, was pretty different. They didn't have some massive early game lead. They were playing, you know, from a position of parity. We talked about which draft would you prefer. Almost all of us were all on the 100 Thieves side. And Cloud9 just straight up outplayed them in the 5v5. So... I think that's definitely a nice 4 Cloud9 fans to see. Well, all that analysis is a great reason for you to think it was an impressive victory from Cloud9, Isaac. But the reason that I think it's an impressive victory, you know those guys on the internet that say you only beat Elden Ring if you did it with a two-handed sword and a naked level one guy? Well, the League of Legends equivalent of that is winning with Nidalee. So the fact that Cloud9 was able to complete that achievement, very impressive. And they added in Renekton, so they're actually doing it on a dance pad. Yeah, like people yeah. do with Elden dance Ring, pad, you know, naked dance level pad. one guy yeah. with a sword, no spells, <laughs> no buffs, no items. Pretty impressive stuff. Yeah. I don't know what the I'm smurfing it. I think the only way to make it harder would be to add in a Jace. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now. Uh, okay. All right. Come on. Now we're talking about world record type of stuff here, yeah. my friend. Then your eyes have to be closed as yeah. well. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like yeah. Dance that eyes closed level one. We're starting to transcend humanity a little bit with this one. Hundred thieves right now though are just looking to transcend game two. They want to take us to a third game. Yesterday when we got to see Team Liquid versus Dignitas, it was kind of a similar thing, right? Where you're looking at it and you're thinking, okay, Team Liquid is definitely heavy favorites. They smash.
smashed the first game, but Dig was able to bounce back very well in yeah. game number two. So I'd love to see 100 Thieves pull out some of that same magic and give us a show here against Cloud9. Absolutely. And I do think you, when you're talking about bright spots, one of the things you have to talk about was Sniper in that first game. Yeah. Thanatos obviously, you know, took the Renekton, you know, had some early presence. But at the end of the day, Thanatos got a little bit too aggressive, was trying to hold that wave a little bit too long, and Sniper punished him. Got the solo kill, you know, in this matchup that we're kind of hyping up, you know, this potential battle for Rookie of the Year between these two top laners, and Sniper came out on top. Uh, this is that top lane matchup. When you look at Spring versus Summer, obviously it's a pretty stark difference here for Sniper. Yes, sir. He has not been performing to that same level that he was able to in Spring. It was coming out of the gate really, really aggressive. I think overperforming expectations is JoJo okay. Whoa, yeah. yeah. He, had, he had the early flash there because if Quid flashes, the auto follows and you are dead. Yep, 100%. It looks a little bit silly this from is, where we were watching it. Dang, are you yeah. kidding? JoJo is... Okay, he's waiting for the heal from Blabber, so he's not in one shot range now. Honestly, yeah, both their HP is pretty low. close. This is actually really, really risky stuff. I mean, if you if you hit a, a pass through Q, Quid had to flash. So yeah, he probably had to flash a Q because um, you know if, if you hit anything through the wave there, he could dash in and just finish you off. So this is incredibly close. He's gonna go for it. Yup, Jojo actually has enough mana to do that. That's the important part. Quid only had enough in the tank to be able to Valk away, so he knows he can't try to stand and fight anything, even if Jojo wants to take it. Mid lane is spicy, and it's spicy quick here in game number two. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, these are two confident mid laners. JoJo. Oh, oh my god, he stole oh it! No. River smited it too early. <laughs> Thanatos is going to take the blue. Uh -oh. He's going to get the bonus money for the first blood. If I am jungling right now, I am typing FF so many times. Oh, oh man, uh -oh. that ain't no oh. good. But Quid gets one back for a solo bolo on JoJo in the mid lane. Oh, JoJo overstayed. And Quid just TV's back. JoJo not yet based and does get caught by the very edge of that phosphorus bomb. This one got spicy fast. What on earth, man? That is now a double buff croc who just got gifted first blood. Not only does it feel terrible for the jungler, if you're the top laner, I'm also typing FF. I don't yeah, want to lean against mad. this guy. You just gave him a red buff, a blue buff. You gave him a gold, border gold gleed. Like, it's ridiculous. And it's not just the fact that he has the double buffs, because he also got to last hit the blue, yeah. which gives you more XP money than a cannon gold. minion. It gives you the EXP on top of it. Let's see how close this gets, because River smites it. Oh, 49 to yeah. 3. I, yeah. What, was the th when it went from 49 to 3, that was the burn from the Pillar of Flame, I think. That's what I think, yeah. So I think he literally did 3. You can see the frustration on his face there. That is a tough one to get by. And then, ooh, JoJo gonna die again. Back in mid lane, yeah. Ayla making the rotation up as Quid gets a second one here on JoJo. This game has three kills in four minutes. We are off to the races. Yeah, this one's getting messy fast. And now JoJo just died again. The second death is always so much more costly because you don't have TP. Yeah. So now there's no actually coming back to collect this as Ayla tries to bend the anchor around the wave there to actually nail Blabber, who could have been in trouble. But at the end of the day, uh, we'll see how much this Meech can collect. Looks like all of it as it is going to be Vulcan just basing. Uh, but yeah, Renekt is way ahead. If you want to have someone behind, though, you'd rather have your Cassante behind than your Lucian. And uh, we'll see you know, how much he can kind of maintain, because when they get a red buff, it's actually quite a bit of early regen as well. So it's very difficult. It helps with the trading, helps with the regen. Uh, and so it's going to put you at that big advantage early on. Obviously, the blue buff not going to be nearly as important for a mana list champion. Right, yeah. Um, it doesn't, uh, it's it's, it's, it's more of a mental gonna run thing. not going to run out of mana either way. Yeah, it's, it's But more there is a, a second color, and it's frustrating. Right. When you see the one buff, you're like, oh, all right, not, not that big of a deal. Double buffs? Double, double buff. buffs is where you actually get a little bit frustrated with the situation. Now, back here in bottom lane, things pretty even between the Ash and the Zeri. And again, I like the fact that you brought it up back in game number one. It was the Berserker Zeri contingency plan yep. all the time, back when this guy was undisputed best AD carry in the league, right? Chekhov's Berserker. You mentioned him once in draft. He just AFK farms for 20 minutes, gets a quadro kill, and the game's over. And last game, we got to see that patience and that team fight navigation skill to great use. Absolutely. It was kind of one of my one of my favorite moments from a pro cast was we had Huhi come on a cast. And he was talking about how he's like, oh, yeah, like, w which spot do you kind of prefer? And they're like, well, Cloud9 has Berserker on his area, and he's probably just going to get a random triple kill, and then they're going to win the game. And then <laughs> not 30 <laughs> seconds later, a fight breaks out in the I river, he gets that. a triple kill. He's like, like I said, they just yeah. <laughs> random triple kill. Yeah. Turns out, Zeri does that. The game becomes pretty easy. 
Blabber's going to go ahead and start up these grubs again on the Nidalee, going back to what we were talking about with Inspired in game number one. He said with Nidalee just being able to kind of control these grubs, be able to play around your Renekton. And right now, Cloud9's got the first one. We'll see if 100 Thieves can force them away from the rest. That's what happened in game number one. Ayla's going to be the first one to step up here, but he stepped up all alone. Ayla just dropped. Thanatos has to slice and dice his way back away, but JoJo's going in with more bullets, ready for River. Now Sniper's gone all out. Blabber trying to get back away. Quid still in full retreat as Vulcans looking to chase these guys down with another head, but pulled. He finds the Corky Copter, and it's a double kill for Blabber's Nidalee. C9 feeling good about that one. Yeah, River smote one away, but that's all they get at the end of the day. They are now down almost 2,000 gold here already. Uh, this is going to be tough for them to bounce back in. Jojo also got a kill, which is actually pretty important for him to kind of get him back in this a little bit, as both those early kills did go over to Quid. We can see this one more time. Uh, so they want to try to push in here aggressively, but the positioning much better from Cloud9 this time around. If you remember back to game one, 100 Thieves were able to get a jump on Jojo, chunk him out low, then then they went over to the Grubs, and that actually prevented Cloud9 from taking the fight. This time, Jojo has perfect positioning on the side, lands a full calling on Ayla as he actually went in. Then as River's trying to do a drive-by, does steal one Grub, but that is him going down as a result. When you're spending those spells on the Grubs, when you're trying to actually finish that off, yep. you are easy pickings. And a couple early kills here for Blabber already. Just got his thousandth career kill in the LCS. Damn. That's a lot of kills. Yup, the dude is getting it done in the jungle. And man, 2,000 gold, not even eight minutes into the game, actually feels really, really bad. 100 Thieves is going to at least try to get this Drake back. I don't believe that Blabber is close enough to be able to make any sort of realistic challenge for it. So 100 Thieves will at least be happy about grabbing that for themselves. Blabber, though, on this Nidalee, just now hitting level seven. He's ahead of the brand in terms of pacing, which always feels great. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, brand is really, really fast. Nidalee, obviously, want to keep up that pace, want to stay aggressive. You know, we heard Inspire talk about it that... Uh, Whoa! Over the wall from Vulcan, immediately looking for that engage on Meech. Vulcan and Jojo want this 2v2 kill. A little bit more damage is all it's going to take. The calling being blocked up by Ayla here with the Nautilus, but the dash into the flash, and Jojo gets his man. Nicely played there from Vulcan and Jojo together. Yeah, just like that, Jojo back-to-back -back kills, right back in it on the Lucian. Going to be feeling really good about that. But Zerker just holding down mid uh, and is going to be able to hang on here. And this is the quote from Sniper on Pros talking about River. Whenever he sees an angle, he's going to go for it, you know. But a lot of times we have trouble following up. When we look at it after, he's usually right. I just need to follow up on what call he's going for. And this is something that we were discussing. He was basically talking about, you know, River will call, oh, we could go for this fight, or oh, we could take this dragon, or oh, we could do this thing. And sometimes they don't understand the angle. They're not seeing it. But when they're going into the VOD reviews, he's able to kind of explain that. And they're realizing, okay, we needed to actually listen to River. So that was one of their major takeaways, was just to have trust on his call to try to be more coordinated. So that's what we really want to see this team working on. Ooh, Thanatos with the flash away to try to escape up here. Sniper goes all out to pull him through the wall, but it might have just pulled him over to safety instead. Another slice. Sniper trying to keep on chasing. The all out ends up ruining the play, taking him yeah. further away from where River would have been able to help. Exactly. I mean, you, you land that initial knockback, and River is going to have the combo to follow it up. If River actually gets the full combo down, bounces the ult and everything, but he goes all out. Maybe he thought he had a different angle, or maybe he just thought he had a lot more damage than he did. But at the end of the day, ends up pushing him to safety, and it's both their flashes expended on the play. And now Blabber is here to try to poke and prod, try to harass. Won't be any sort of an angle for a dive, but right. still a failed play from 100 Thieves when you're already down 3k gold. Every one of those attempts really matters. A failed play. Blabber stops the reset for River, slowing his tempo even further. They force Ayla to come up there to try to respond to something, which means that 100 Thieves now don't have any extra firepower down here in the bottom lane. And Berserker's just having a great time against Meech with the Zeri versus Ash. 100 Thieves is again here in game number two, just feeling uh -oh. like they're not coordinated enough. Meech knocked away from the turret, knocked right into Berserker. And that Zeri is scary, man. Easy money for the C980 carry. Yeah, nicely done there by Vulcan. Doesn't even need the full combo. You just headbutt him away from the tower, so he can't do anything about it. They knew he had no flash from that previous play. So an easy kill there donated into Berserker's pockets. I got to say, Vulcan hasn't been talked about a ton this split, but he has really stepped it up from how he was doing last split. I feel like he's been really strong for the team, a big part of their early game, you know, moving around the map, finding plays. And also, when you look back to game number one, he was pivotal in finding so many of these engages that the team could actually follow up on. They're looking way more coordinated. Yeah, he's my MVP for game number one. He's putting on a strong showing here in game number two as well. Blabber. 
starting up these grubs. First one stolen away there by River. And honestly, 100 Thieves are going to be happy to steal away two of these because it keeps the grubs at 3-3. Three to three. It stops C9 from being able to spawn the Void Mites. But back on the topic of Vulcan, I actually think he came under a lot of fire, and rightfully so in spring. It felt like he just wasn't where he needed to be. It yeah. wasn't like the level that we had seen out of him before. But now he seems to really be getting it back together again. And not even just spring. Back on FlyQuest, right? Like, yeah. Vulcan's stock was incredibly, incredibly high, but he did have, you know, a rough time on FlyQuest with Prince. They couldn't make it happen there. Then he came to Cloud9, and it's like, wait, you're not doing well with Berserker either? Like, are you just not as good on? as we remembered? But he is really having that big resurgence. He's showing us the level that we came to expect from Vulcan over so many years. I also think it's really worth talking about the upcoming opponents for Cloud9 okay. because they are starting out, you know, obviously really, really good. They're 3-0 right now, but they have some very heavy hitters coming up. This will be their fourth game. Exactly. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I understand. <laughs> <laughs> their, uh, their final three opponents include two of the top three, TL and FlyQuest. So their bigger challenges remain to be faced. Oh, Ayla wanted to go in there for the engage on JoJo, but they don't even have the damage to follow it up in time. Never mind. Yes, they do. That last little bit of damage over time is going to finish the Lucian as Berserker and Vulcan now in a 2v3 trying to fight it out here in the pit. Flash over the wall from Berserker as soon as he gets hit by the dredge line, and now Vulcan looking to keep Ayla locked down as Thanatos wants to arrive. Sniper goes all out. They want to go in for Ayla. He might just have to try to get over the wall, but I don't think there's any way home considering he doesn't even have a flash. Thanatos goes in. Call the Meek, and Ayla's weak. Vulcan with another beautiful two-man knockup. The Alistar just facilitating and playmaking all day long. Berserker's getting fed and 100 Thieves is dead. C9, 5,000 gold ahead. Damn, that was some sick rhyming. I'm not going to lie. He got like five or six in a row there. Two or three of them were intentional. The okay. last one, you just got to okay. let it ride. You just, just got to let it ride. <laughs> and right now, Blabber's letting it ride all the way to the bank here. Just going to pick up some extra gold as soon as he gets this last kill on Quid. There it is. Flash forward for the pounce, the swipe, the takedown. And Blabber's on a killing spree. And Vulcan, you know, nearly 100% KP. Blabber making that a little bit worse with that solo kill in the side lane. But 1 0 and 8, the guy has been everywhere. By the early Swifties has just been constantly looking for these fights. You know, really pivotal for them in this series. And remember, the LCS championship tickets are on sale now. Ooh, beautifully done. Vulcan goes in for the headbutt. Ayla buffers through it with the dredge line. Vulcan buffers his buffer with a pulverize to knock him up in the middle of the animation. Jojo and Blabber have enough damage to secure that Drake. Now Jojo jumping forward again. Vulcan again doing a beautiful job blocking Ayla's attempt to stop Jojo. Everything that 100 Thieves wants to try to do, Vulcan's doing better. Absolutely. He is stopping every single angle it feels that they are going for at this point. We are 14 minutes into the game. It is nearly an 8,000 gold lead. Yeah. This is a stomp right now Not from Cloud9. You know, even with those early kills that they were able to get on JoJo, even with a couple things, they feeling like going 100 Thieves' way. Cloud9 have just been better at every single turn. The call already cashed out now for Berserker. JoJo approaching his cash out as well. So these 80 carries are going to be in a great spot coming up. We're at that spot in the game, Isaac, where it's not up to 100 Thieves to, to play it right or play it well or find the angle. They need Cloud9 to make some kind of a mistake. And based on how C9 have been playing this series so far, I don't think that they're going to give that opportunity over to the Thieves. Ayla still just always trying to look for these Nautilus plays, but honestly, it feels like he's just outclassed by Vulcan in this series. And now he's going to get caught again oh, once more. As soon as he goes for the dredge line, Vulcan is ready to intercept. It's a 4v3 for 100 Thieves, but C9 just walks it off. The arrow connects on the Alistar. Unbreakable Will immediately counters it. Thieves get no punish. They're going to try to go back and go for the Rift Herald, but the whole time, JoJo split pushing bottom. Exactly. I mean, this is this is just crazy. JoJo completely unanswered. Cloud9, you know, playing that limit really, really well, not over pushing. And this is the largest gold lead at 14, this entire split from any team. Cloud9 already had incredible early game stats that Jat was talking about uh, on the lounge earlier today in the pre-show. And now they're just going to be that much better after this beating there, giving 100 Thieves. And they weren't even able to take the Herald. They're still hanging around, but man, it's going to be tough to not just get killed if you try to walk in here. Well, JoJo has teleported up to join. So C9 has all five men ready to fight for this one. 100 Thieves is going to try to make an approach. Ayla with the flash over the wall goes for the dredge line, but he doesn't find JoJo. Instead, on the Berserker, both Vulcan getting himself back away. Now, remember, there is no Unbreakable Will available. JoJo still trying to get away, down to about 200 HP. A lot of damage on Vulcan, and Meech is going to get the kill. Blabber secures the Herald at the same time. So it's support traded away for Herald. So far, Thanatos doesn't no want to give over anything extra. Honestly, 100 Thieves. 
considering the Rift Herald doesn't even get claimed, they'll be pretty happy about that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that is a positive play for them, especially from a deficit. You're feeling really good. You know, you're able to go in and get a slightly positive trade down this much gold. Blaver not able to stop the recall, not able to grab the eye, unfortunately, for him, but still very, very firmly in the driver's seat. And I'm curious, Flowers, you know, we, you there's a lot of talk about is Berserker him anymore? You know, Bwipo saying he's not him. That kind of spawned all that discussion in spring. Yep. Do you think he's back? Is is it fair to say? Is it fair to declare? Or do they have to take down those top teams? Well, I think he's got to do it on somebody that's not Zeri. That's that's kind of where I'm at. We've, all of the Berserker highlight reel has been on Zeri. He had his kind of slump. He's back on Zeri. Okay. So this is the beginning of the good vibes for Berserker, I would feel like. If he can put up this kind of a performance again, it, it he might be him again. He might be him. JoJo is burning. Any other champion, I would say, he'd survive, but that is brand, so it ain't going to happen. Meanwhile, 100 Thieves picking up two. It's JoJo and Blabber traded away for Ayla. You will take that every day of the week for 100 Thieves. <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit of a flashback to spring for Cloud9. A couple random deaths after the strong early game. Yeah. Uh, yep. This time they have enough of a monster lead, though, that I don't really think it's going to matter too much. Uh, they do get caught out. JoJo Punish has been having a little bit of a, a sloppier game in this game number two. Played a very clean game one on Tristana, though. Obviously, Lucian, I think it's a lot harder to survive. Ooh, hold on. Sniper wants to go in for this. The ulti used by Thanatos, though. Sniper tries to get away from it, and not today. Thanatos gets his revenge for the solo kill in game number one. He's getting one of his own here in game number two. Put his name on the scoreboard. Both these boys are even. The battle for rookie of the year. Yep, they're battling it out. And Mossy, we can't forget about him. I think he's another big candidate. Obviously, there's another uh, a number of other candidates, including, you know, Meech, Mass, Castle, etc. cetera. Um, but I do think it's really down to Thanatos, Sniper, or Masu in yep. my eyes. Uh, those are the three that I think are likely going to be competing for it at the end of the day. Well, top laners are an island, man. So the only dude who you can really mess with his prospects is the enemy top laner. If an enemy <laughs> AD carry gets it, that's just team dip. But if, as long as the enemy top laner doesn't get it, you can feel good, exactly. right? Exactly. You were the best rookie top laner. Right. Even even if the AD carry gets it, rigged. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about that. C9, not worried about much of anything right now. Eight and a half thousand gold ahead, 18 and a half minutes into the game. Blabber's got control over that bot side river, over that bot side crab, and the Drake is about to spawn. If you're 100 Thieves, I don't even think you think about contesting this. All right, it's, it's, quiz, it's quiz time, chat. Okay. How many monitors would we have to turn off on the C9 side for 100 Thieves to win this game? Well, uh, I think River's monitor might be looking a little black and white right now. You need to at least turn off one monitor, but you need to turn off multiple monitors from this position. Two. Two monitors. So yes. one monitor isn't going to do it. One monitor is not enough. One monitor is not enough. Yeah. I mean, keep in mind, they're still allowed to play with their monitor off. It just could be difficult. Right, I, I know. But you yeah. could, you turn Vulcan's monitor off, and then you just have Berserker tell him top left, top right, like whatever, <laughs> for where to click to stand on top yeah. of, of the Zeri, and then just press his buttons once you're in the fight so Zeri doesn't die. I'm um, seeing three. I'm seeing five. Five monitors. We got a seven in chat. That guy's drunk. That guy, yeah, that There's guy's not even that many no, monitors. He just means that we have to turn two of our monitors uh, off as well so that we can't cast or curse The them. coaches have to Yo, turn Oh, yeah, there monitors. you go. Well, I mean, dude, I don't think Reaper's watching anyway. He was just kind of lounging <laughs> back behind the stage. Yeah, he's for sure playing Elden Ring. Yeah, yeah, dude. He's having a great time back he's there. He's, he's, up a he's new leveling build. up his anima power yeah. in Swarm. <laughs> it's, it's, there's a lot of levels on that. Yeah, there are. You got to you gotta put your hours in. Yeah, asking, can they choose who's off? You can choose. Yeah. You can choose. Some pretty high uh, high estimations, though. We're getting, I got a 12 in there. We got some threes. It looks like averaging around three. Okay, three monitors. All right, so chat has less faith than I do. Uh, Vulcan, Thanatos, and Berserker are just going to bury Sniper up here in the brushes of top lane. As Azale, I think that death coincides pretty perfectly here with the Baron about to spawn. I don't know if C9 is going to go for this early of a rush on it. Meech and the rest of 100 Thieves trying to put the damage on the tier 1 turret, but nope, it is C9 deciding, hey, all in, go for Baron, make him come here and fight us, if nothing else. TP about to show up. Looks like JoJo's about to make his way in here first, but you're going to see 100 Thieves coming up to try to respond to it. They are in a 4v5. Once Sniper spawns in 10 seconds, he's going to have his Unleashed TP, but Cloud9 is trying to burn it before we even get to that point in time. River wants to make his way into the pit, but he's going to be down to 200 HP in the bear, and he is secured by Blabber and Cloud9, but now can they get away? 100 Thieves in pursuit. Sniper looking to block their exit. He shows up in the tri brush. Vulcan's going to get cooked. It's beef on the barbecue, but Blabber gets one back, and River's out of the picture. JoJo dies next. 4v3 for 
400 thieves as Blabber continues his escape. Berserker is so unconcerned, he's gonna make sure he gets the red before he leaves. Blabber just keeping their attention elsewhere as C9 will end up losing two for one in players, but they walk away with a Baron. Yeah, they get the Baron, they take that off the map. Cloud9 just looking to continually stay aggressive. And those spears are starting to hurt. That one did 60, 70% of Meech's health with just the spear as Blabber was kind of oh. in that 1v3 and he even gets him. He takes him down on the back end of it. Nearly gets quid too. The yeah. Corky barely escapes. He looked for the prediction spear there. I think he thought he was going to Valk down into the mm. pit, so that's why he's throwing it down there. Tried to go for the big play. Uh, unfortunately, he just Valk in a straight line. Blabber is almost making me think Nidalee is good. That's how well he is playing. Stop that. This, okay, I know, I know. It's dangerous. Yeah, it's it's a dangerous line of a, thinking. It's a dark and lonely path. It's, it's a dangerous line of thinking. I know, I know. But do you realize that if Cloud9 wins this game, that in just a single series, Cloud9 will triple the total number of Nidalee <laughs> wins in the LCS? In I just do, a single series. That. Yeah, that's incredible. That is truly, truly a, a time to be alive. Yes, one of the stats of all time. <laughs> we have to make sure that that's recorded. As 100 Thieves just really would like this game to not be recorded, honestly. This one has been <laughs> trouble for the Thieves from minute one all the way back, man. I mean, just remembering the way that the jungle went early with River losing that blue buff to three HP and then getting solo killed by Thanatos. It's just been a nightmare from the very start. C9, we thought that the first game was going good from the start, but this one even more so. Here's another look at how this play went down. Vulcan just trying to keep them busy while the rest of the team burned the Baron. Yeah, I mean, Quick got a lot of poke in there. His first big one hit three members, hit Berserker, Jojo, and Blabber. So a lot of poke was put down, and they can kind of use Ayla as well as Meech here with the slows to look for these chase downs. Vulcan was always going to die, so he's just going to try to buy team for the rest, uh, time for the rest of the team. Yeah. Sniper TP's in, and you think, okay, this could be a huge moment, but then you realize they are this far behind. Everyone just turns on him, and he's immediately forced to run. Uh, they do get a kill, though, on to Zeri, so Cloud9 yeah. getting a little bit fast and loose with this massive lead that they have built up. Yeah, I'm not really sure. We didn't really get to see what led to Berserker being there. He still has his flash up. He still has his ult up. His cleanse is on cooldown. So I'm guessing he was just a little too overconfident, stepped into some CC that he wasn't prepared for. As 100 Thieves at least now has a 5v4 to try to clear Cloud9 out of their section of the map. The thing for C9 is they only had a little bit of time left on the Baron. The Baron power play is at only plus 1500. That's the amount of gold that you get for killing the buff. So for 100 Thieves, at least you're glad that C9 didn't really get a whole lot out of that early Baron take. Sometimes we see those just completely oh. bulldoze the game as Meech is forced to flash away from JoJo's culling. Yeah, JoJo got a ton of damage down with that culling and uh, Meech sees every little bit of gold that he can get. He is so far behind in that individual one-on-one, -on -one, you know, good yeah. 3,000 down from Berserker. Quid makes it a little bit closer as he does collect a bounty on that top side. He's the only one that has an advantage for his squad. Um, everyone very far behind, so let's see how this did happen. Looks like yeah. he, yeah, he wanted oh, to try to interrupt Quid's just recall. Error. Just kind of got baited. Okay. They were all lying in wait. Quid starts recalling. I wonder if they had tracked that ward. If they did, credit to them. Mm -hmm. uh, he just kind of starts that recall up. Looks like Zeri moves forward and then just caught from all sides. Well, the third Drake for Cloud9 is about to drop here. Blabber will bring them to Soul Point. It's nearly a 4,000 gold lead in top lane. It's over 2K in the jungle. You already mentioned the 3,000 in the 80 carry roll. I mean, honestly, the advantage that Quid had, um, Vulcan has the same amount of advantage over Ayla. So it is neutralized by the power of the cow, who has honestly neutralized so many plays that 100 yeah. Thieves has tried to make this game. It's been really impressive. Yeah, Vulcan has been playing incredible so far today. And Quid, maybe in a little bit of trouble, but feeling okay. Nice Not going to pop anything too much as the Ooh. arrow does go wide on JoJo. I always love how JoJo gives him that thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> nice try, buddy. He's nothing if not consistent. Oh, River, does he die to this? The damage over time with the last caster auto? Yes, it does. JoJo gets the kill on River, and now C9 ain't feeling too scared at all. Baron not going to spawn for another minute and a half. Drake was just taken by them, but Sniper trying to come in here on the flank. 100 Thieves still thinking maybe they got a chance to try to fight something here. Sniper's all out, but it ain't going to matter. Ayla drops. Berserker gets him, and now a double kill for Thanatos. Mean 100 Thieves has only one man left standing, and he'll fall too. A triple kill over to Thanatos, an ace for Cloud9. 10 seconds on River. Everybody else is dead for a lot longer, and C9's just running straight into the base. Yeah, five for zero. Clean ace, Cloud9. Looking like they're going to close this one the way they started in dominant fashion here. River's back up, but it's a 1v5. 
I think Cloud9 just want to end it. Yeah, Vulcan flashing forward for the Pulverize. They don't need anything else. The Ace credit goes over to Blabber. Ayla's back alive, but it won't matter. The Nexus is exposed. 26 minutes into the game. Cloud9 hits 100 Thieves even harder the second time. They'll 2-0 this series. Man, I really think the hype is building and building and building towards these next couple matches here for Cloud9. They've got FlyQuest, they've got TL in these next couple weeks. Energy is in there as well, but two of the top three teams, those matches are going to be so exciting and really, I think, are going to tell us so much about expectations going into playoffs because those are the big dogs. It's very clear those three teams feel like they're on a tier of their own and we just have to find out who's going to be going into playoffs in that pole position. Yeah, I'm 100% on board that C9 has to play against FlyQuest and TL and look competitive and beat at least one of them for them to be the real deal. But at the same time, if you're taking on opponents like 100 Thieves who are the more middle of the pack teams and just completely smashing them, it is a good omen. I think for C9 fans, this is absolutely the look that you needed to see if you want this team to be competitive in those top level series. Absolutely, and if you're 100 Thieves, you start to get a little bit nervous about your playoff hopes because now they fall to one and three. Uh, they haven't been able to, to pick up a win in, in their last three straight series. They got two owed by Dig, two owed by TL. Now they just got two owed by C9. Obviously, it is a top team, but they still have FlyQuest remaining in one of their last three matches. So that's kind of an expected loss. You do have Immortals on Shopify, but now it's kind of all eyes on those matchups. Yeah. You've got to be able to show up and play well because Immortals has the same amount of wins as 100 Thieves does. If Immortals beat you, they could be in playoffs and you could be out. So yeah. 100 Thieves, it's getting down to crunch time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the series is wrapped up and it's time to join Inspired and JoJo for an interview. Hello, everyone. I'm standing here with JoJo after uh, his 2-0 victory against 100 Thieves. So, JoJo, um, is it, how does this matchup go like that? Like, level one, you have to flash away from the core key playing Lucian? Okay, to be honest, I don't have a mic, do I take? To be honest, he got a ward level one, so he yeah, hit level I, two. I saw it, and I expected you to see I it. I mean, I said in game he's going to hit level two wave one, and then so, I, I kind of forgot. Oh, like, so you said yeah. it. So when he hit level two in game, I'm like, oh, shit, he's level two. I'm fucked. So you think it's your teammate's fault? They should be, like, reminding you all the time. Yes, yeah, Blabber's fault. He warded there, so it's okay, lucky Blabber's like, fault. Okay, it's teammate's fault. Yeah. And then after your Renekton just solo kills the brand level three in the jungle, basically solo wins the game. You were doing everything you could to make the game interesting, right? <laughs> okay, like, that mid fight, we would have won, by the way. If you guys watch it back. Team Gap again. Team Gap again. Yeah, team Gap. Okay. I mean, I should so? play better, but we got a double kill there if we're not scared. Because we oh, said Nautilus was moving. Scared. So who was scared? Blabber. Oh, but again. It's never again? my fault. I mean, I mean, no mistakes. jungle fight. I mean, no for mistakes sure, this game. Bro. It's all jungle fight. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then, uh, so basically, after that, like, 100 Thieves didn't really have any opportunities to come back to the game. So what were you doing in comms? Like, for sure, you were having some fun, right? I mean, I think the whole team just, honestly, we were just laughing game two. Yeah. I guess we shouldn't have, but, like, it felt like a scrim. Yeah, I mean, it felt like 100 teams in skills, It didn't right? feel like a real game, so yeah. it's hard to, like, we had to focus up after we died a couple times and then yeah. try to, like, calm down and just win the game. But mid-game was pretty fun. I don't know if they showed the comms, but it was kind of crazy. Yeah, did they expect before the game that it's going to be that easy? I mean, 100 Thieves is a stage team, right? So we can't underestimate them, yeah. right? So we still knew that we could lose. Even game one was kind of close. So, But game two was a free win after top solo killed and balling jungle all got ahead. Yeah. yeah, and uh, what did Thanatos actually say during level 3, invading enemy jungle, like alone, killing enemy jungler, basically like winning the game? What? He just said he killed Brand and he got blue, I don't know, he said he got a camp or something. Yeah, top gap? Yeah, top, yeah, gap. top gap. Okay, I, I guess that's it. I think uh, the game was pretty smooth, pretty easy, pretty clean by you guys, and uh, I think there's nothing else to ask. Big gap. I guess so. Okay, I'm coming to you guys now. The rule is just stay in the water of the river, like, or the bush that's touching the water. You just can't <laughs> run on the land. Okay, okay. Yo, yo, Come yo. Come yo. Yo. <laughs> All right, we're going to count it down. Okay, Three, okay. two, one, fight. I know how I'm going to go. One, fight. <laughs> 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 this is fair, by the way. Yo, can I move? <laughs> what is this, bro? <laughs> Okay, I got one at least. I got one somehow. That was nice first at the end, I but that like wasn't even close. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I need level 10, I think. Or like, no, I want to I wanna beat the record, though. I oh, wait, so you want to go for eight. So, so the max amount of tries you're allowed is three. Oh, How many exhausts did you even have to use? You didn't use all of them. Only two. What? You died too fast. Oh. I didn't even use my Ignite, bro. Oh! <laughs> 
Plus. River, do you think that Riven is uh, better than who he's pick? Who he played Viego. I think Viego is better. Okay, okay. No, I'm gonna beat you guys. Yeah, Insanity played Akali. What do you think about that sniper? Ah, uh, Akali's not bad, honestly. I was okay. thinking of going there. But it's like Insanity, you know? I'm like better than Insanity. I think I'm just gonna ult this. My ult will be back up. Oh. I think it's chill though. Don't, don't, don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah back, back, back. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh my back. god. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. You guys distracted me. You guys distracted me. Yo, what do you think about Lucid with Spikes? Good? Nah, bro. I'm going Tommy. Look at your freaking champions. Yeah. <laughs> now you can't kill me anymore, Bill. You sure? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, bro. I have to say, the 100 Thieves, like, other four coordination compared to the other sets is is high. Okay, Emily, count us down. Go Go on. Go on. Four. Three. Okay, two. Okay, one. My son first. Okay, now we go. Look at you. <laughs> Look at you. Okay, you guys. Slot burst. <laughs> Bro, you're next to me. Oh, Gal played oh, freaking... close. Wait. Look at you guys, bro. Wait. Oh my gosh, Gal played. You guys are trash. Oh, we did it. Let's go. Wow. Riven the pick, baby. Too I'm strong. Vibes. You are now the official winner of the 1v4. Doing it at nice. level 8. 10 seconds for a victory speech, Sniper. These guys are trash. I own them. I'm the best Riven in the world. And that's I'm all I need to say. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Dude, why'd you put your new rig in the basement? Didn't you hear? Bill's a good gillionaire now. Basically, my new connection is so strong I can game anywhere. Check it out. We've got Gamer Rocker, Gamer Floaty, Gamer Couch. Whoa. It's got wheels. Gamer Bench, Gamer Throne, and Gamer Mower. What's that? It's hard to game while walking downstairs. I get it. That's smart. Live like a gillionaire with low latency everywhere. AT&T Fiber with all five. Red Bull gives you wings. I see you dancing in the air. We've been listening to this.